While electric vehicles have been around for quite some time, in fact, in the early 1900s, a lot of offerings were electric. In fact, Indiana, Indianapolis-based National made exclusively electric vehicles from 1900 to 1903. All Nationals were electric. New York City in the early 1900s had several Edison electric car charging stations throughout their city. Fast forward to over a century and electric cars are making a comeback, all thanks to the introduced, in 2011, Nissan Leaf. Alright, and first impressions on driving the first generation LEAF are, is that it's pretty smooth. Uh, it's pretty quiet, with the exception of the slight hum from the electric motor. Other than that, it's basically dr like driving any small Nissan sedan. And the LEAF in this video is one of the first generation models of 2012 that is a high level SL trim and painted in blue ocean metallic and features gray cloth interior. A glance at the left shows the win new pricing for this car, and despite the fact that the early vehicles had low total driving ranges, uh, in fact this car is showing only roughly 50 to 60 miles of range between charges, the Leaf would prove extremely popular to eco-minded drivers and would remain the best-selling EV until the Tesla Model 3 overtook the Leaf in 2020. And all Nissan Leafs... Leaves? Meh. Our front wheel drive and places their battery packs low in the center of, of the car for an extremely balanced low center of gravity. Power comes from an 80 kilowatt hour AC synchronous electric motor with over a mile of copper wiring wound inside aluminum housing. This motor creates 102, 107 horsepower at 0 RPM, 207 pound feet of torque also at 0 RPM. In August of 2011, Car and Driver tested their long term Leaf SL from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds. 0 to 90 miles per hour was reached in 25 and a half seconds, with the quarter mile reached in 17 and a half seconds at 78 miles per hour. Top speed is limited to 92 miles per hour. Being that the Leaf is strictly a battery electric vehicle, it uses no fuel, and the motor gets its power from a 24 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. The battery consumes 34 kilowatt hours for 100 miles driven with an estimated total driving range of 73 miles. And with the SL you get three ways to charge your leaf, the slow trickle charge, your normal charge, and your quick charge which is CADMO compliant. EPA fuel economy EV equivalents are 106 miles per gallon city, 92 miles per gallon highway, and 99 miles per gallon combined. My 20 mile test drive average uh, returned 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, which is equivalent to 121.34 miles per gallon. And the sole available transmission on the Leaf is a direct drive single speed reduction unit activated by a strange melted hockey puck looking thing and features eco mode as well as a dynamic regenerative braking. Low forward speeds as well as reverse cause the Leaf to emit an audible tone to warn pedestrians of the approaching presence of this otherwise silent vehicle. And looking around the rear, the Leaf's aerodynamic styling leads to a somewhat controversial look to the rear end. An odd flowing hatchback with thin LED tail lights and brake lights behind clear lenses seamlessly merge into incandescent turn indicators and reverse lamps. The top of the entire gate resides the integral spoiler and our car's integrated photovoltaic solar cell provides charge to the 12 volt battery. Overall, I like the rear end styling, I think it's fun and quirky. A little bit organic, however I do prefer the more understated second generation Leaf styling instead. And along the profile, the Leaf is unmistakable for anything else. It is, it's wind cheating without looking overly weird. 
a typical hatchback if you will. The Leaf features a 106.3 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 175 inches and a curb weight of 3,377 pounds. And steering is electrically assisted vehicle speed sensitive variable rate rack and pinion with 3.3 turns lock to lock and a 34.2 foot turning radius. Wheels are 16 inch silver painted aluminum with P205 55 R16 Bridgestone Ecopia EP422 tires front and rear. Brakes are four wheel disc brakes with vented rotors up front and solid rotors in the rear. They are assisted by ABS, traction control, and regenerative braking and can bring the leaf from 70 miles per hour to zero in 182 feet. And up front is where the leaf looks the goofiest, almost alien-like in appearance. To some, it's downright ugly. For me, I personally do not mind it so much, but I don't love it either. All the styling is for the sake of low wind resistance to help the batteries be, be as efficient as possible. Headlamps are bi-LED units housed in aerodynamically styled lenses. The odd shape helps deflect and reduce wind noise. The absence of a grill is evident, however, down below, there is an opening in the fascia which helps with brake and battery cooling. The charge ports are mounted behind the door with the blue tinted Nissan logo, and this car is also equipped with halogen fog lamps. Alright, interstate driving in a LEAF. We are on an acceleration ramp right now, as you can see. Acceleration isn't brisk. Um, it's about what you would expect. It's actually pretty, uh, it's, it's very much adequate. And it does help that the acceleration ramp is on a downhill slope. But here we are almost at 70 miles per hour. And overall, the ride is actually really, really smooth, really quiet. Of course, what you would expect. The low rolling resistance tires helps with that. Also, the aerodynamic shape helps with the wind noise as well. But overall, I feel like the car is very usable, especially on highway driving and city driving. Uh, pretty pleased. All right, and we do have Nissan's Intelligent Key Smart Key Access System. And by keeping the key fob in your purse or pocket, you can lock it or unlock the vehicle doors. To lock, simply locate the button on the chrome door handle. A press will lock the vehicle. To unlock it, simply press it again. And opening the door reveals a very nicely styled interior. It's a very usable space, very user friendly. And the seats are made of recycled plastics, but the cloth is very, very soft. Typical Nissan materials here, you've got plastics, some vinyl, you've also got this suede cloth material and a metallic bluish bezel on the doors. Of course, this vehicle is equipped with power windows, power mirrors, and power door locks. You've also got your trip computer buttons here. Buttons to deactivate stability control, your charge timer and heated steering wheel, as well as your headlight leveler. And down below, you have your charge door opener, as well as your hood release. Nice thick plush floor mats, very reminiscent of the Nissan Cube. Manually adjustable seats with manual uh, lumbar support. The seats are Nissan's zero gravity seats. They are very, very comfortable, very supportive. Similar to what you'd get in an Altima. And of course, a leather wrap, tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And paint it through the interior and show more details. As you can see here, nice electrically assisted fluidic power steering. It is a two-tone steering wheel with a light gray leather rim. You do have multifunction controls as well as your cruise control, Bluetooth, audio controls. This vehicle is not equipped with adaptive cruise, however. And a quick look at the LCD display. This is the main display here. Very clear and easy to read. You do have a trip computer and vehicle settings. There is also a setting in here that you can actually change your startup chimes. And moving over to the top part of the binnacle, it actually shows your eco minder, your speed, as well as your clock and outside temperature display. Low glare plastics on the top of the dash. That same metallic bluish black bezels on the center display. It is a Bluetooth equipped with navigation. It also features integrated charge finders in your navigation system. And of course, it is also AM and FM XM radio. 
You also have a compact disc player. Overall, it's a pretty standard Nissan navigation system with the exception of having the charge port or the charge stations integrated. It does utilize the car wing service, but that's been discontinued for uh, Nissan Connect now. So I'm not really sure if that works anymore. Car Wings was actually a 2G service and 2G has been deactivated. And here's your energy minder here. Tons of information regarding EV economy and stuff like that. Uh, different screens to show how long to turn the climate control off to save energy, uh, set your climate control timers, set your charge timers. Everything. Everything you can think of. Placing the vehicle in reverse does activate the reverse camera. Does feature active guidance lines. And the backup image is actually pretty crisp and clear. And moving down, we have a single zone automatic climate control. It is electrically controlled and can be controlled through the Car Wings app when it was new. We've also got two stage heated front seats. We've also got a nice storage tray. You've got several uh, ports here. You have an auxiliary import, USB ports, two front cup holders, the same metallic bluish black plastic bezel on the center console with an electronic parking brake and your weird little shifter lever, a suede padded armrest with deep storage, Overall, I like the interior of the leaf. Even the older leaves and the new leaves are both really, really nice. Automatic dimming rearview mirror with home link and reversal garage door openers. Overhead, you have your overhead lighting as well as your sunglasses holder. And you have your dome override switch here. And the sun visors feature non-illuminated vanity mirrors. The visors also do not slide on extensions. You do also have overhead uh, grab handles. All right, let's take a look at the rear seat. Opening the rear door reveals uh, uh, materials that are similar to the front seats. And the rear seats are actually pretty nice and spacious. They seat three across. You have the nice suede uh, cloth trim on the arm rested again, and that metallic bluish black bezel. The nice plush floor mats continue in the rear. You've also got your switch here for the rear heated bench seat. Only one control and it heats the whole seat. And you have your battery access maintenance panel here. Overhead grab handles. And the seats do seat three across. It is a 60-40 split folding seat with high adjustable head restraints on the outboard passenger and three point belts for all passengers. Very, very roomy back seat. Pulling up this plunger style stop here unlocks the seat back and allows you to fold it flat. You do have your owner's manual packet here. It's almost too big to fit in the glove box so they mounted it to the seat back.
All right, let's look, take a look at the luggage area. Of course, it is a hatchback, so it has a nice uh, amount of storage capacity, and you also have a privacy blind here. Lift over height is actually pretty low due to the nature of it. You also have a nice deep storage area in your electric vehicle equipment. Even though the seats fold, they do not fold flat with the cargo floor. Despite the 24 cubic feet of capacity, the way the seats and the way the batteries are mounted, you've got this big shelf here in the middle, so it doesn't really help with the cargo capacity. However, it does create a flat floor from that point forward, so you could put longer items in it. And this does conclude our in-depth walk around look at the Nissan LEAF. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews, as well as Instagram at brentsoj1. Of course, as always, thanks for watching.